Now, before leaving day two, let's note the recurring pattern that we begin to observe in the days of creation week. Uh, oftentimes, you'll find that it begins with a command, God says, let there be. Then there's the fulfillment where the narrator says, and it was so. Then you have the assessment where God saw what he made and said it was good. And finally, the closure. Now here, we have a different sequence of events. And so if we draw lines from one column to the other, we note that the lines crisscross each other at many different places. And wherever they do, those represent contradictions. So for example, the Bible, as we've just seen, describes trees being made on the third day of creation week, followed then on the fourth day by stars and swimming creatures like fish on day five. Whereas in the evolutionary story, you have stars that are billions of years old. And not until later on in that story do we have fish arising, followed by trees after both fish and stars. And yet from our observations, we know that living things can change over time. And this is where sometimes students get confused in the classroom. They might have an evolutionary professor that says, well, how can you deny evolution? I see evolution happening in my lab. It is a fact. But what are they observing in the laboratory? They're observing variations on a theme, minor changes within the butterfly kind, for example. And yet the students are being led to believe in a very different kind of change. They're hearing the word evolution and understanding that to mean that microbes can change into mankind over millions of years. Notice that Noah himself, even though he spent a third of his life living in the post-flood world, he still reached the age of his forefathers. He lived to be 950 years old. So if the environment was so toxic, why didn't it decrease Noah's lifespan? Or the people that came immediately after him, Shem still lived to be 600 years old, much longer than Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It seems that the, the decline in lifespans was more gradual, which implies not an environmental reason for the change, but something internal. Probably it has to do with genetics. We know that this flower has a special catapult that when its petals burst open, it launches pollen into the air at super speed. It actually accelerates 800 times faster than astronauts being launched into orbit. So this requires fine-tuned components and sophisticated engineering implicating ingenious design here and all over the plant kingdom. And yet all of this was made in a single day.